All right, to start things off, this is unscripted because this is going to be kind of a long video, and with the long videos, I prefer it to be unscripted just directly off the top of my head so I can say what I want to say more clearly, and I can just talk about whatever I want to talk about at the moment. So, and what I'm going to talk about right now is Batman movies and my thoughts on the reboot plans. And to do that, I'm going to start at the very beginning with Batman, 1989 by Tim Burton. Uh, I consider this to be the first real Batman movie. I suppose there were other Batman movies before it, but they, they were, you know, campy and old, and that I consider them long episodes or long serials, if you will. So this one by Tim Burton, it uh, is set the right move for Batman. This is what set Batman going for the dark atmosphere that he is in with today's comics and cartoons and stuff. So uh, I like the first movie because of the way it, it, it set the, the, the entire way to go with Batman movies. And obviously it's, it, it's got a lot of popularity due to the fact that it's got a lot of fans, a lot of followers, and apparently they've picked the right actors, they've got the right music, right director. This is, it's a really good Batman movie. Um, so in uh, 1992, Tim Burton made a sequel uh, called Batman Returns. And it, it was still made by Tim Burton, the music was still by Danny Elfman, and they had Michael Keaton return to reprise his role as Batman. And this time they had two new villains, which was um, <clears throat> Penguin and Catwoman. Now, w w what Tim Burton does in this movie is, uh, I don't think he's really read any of the comic books, and what he did was he just created his own version of the Batman universe. He just he did what, what, what he felt like doing in this one. He, he wasn't uh, chained down by a uh, comic book, uh, you know, the events from the comic books. And, and that's a complaint by many people who make about this is that it's not comic book, it's not true to the source of the comic books. And I, I really don't mind that. I mean, that's what movies do. Movies change it from the comic book just to give us a little more a, t a tweaked perspective, you know, a different perspective of it. And so I, I, I don't really consider that complaint really worthy or void. I do, I mean, I consider the complaint kind of void. And how uh, people also complain how, I guess, like, uh, the, I mean, people just got a bunch of complaints about this movie. But I like this movie better than Batman. It sounds weird, but let me explain why. Because Batman, it, it, it was setting the right tone, the right atmosphere, and it said the dark tone and stuff, you know? And, but Batman was just a little bit boring. Not enough stuff was going on. It was, it, it was too subtle. It, was, it took its time too much. It was still a good movie, and the movie still took itself seriously. It was just a little bit boring, but I still liked it. Now, what Batman Returns did, it has the same dark atmosphere, even darker though, but this time it has more stuff going on. It has action. It has stuff going on. And I think Batman Returns, it, it's the same kind of movie as Batman, but with the, the problems and the mistakes all fixed out. So that's why I like Batman Returns better than Batman, even though I do like both of those movies a lot. So uh, I, I think Tim Burton, he... Uh, he fixed the mistakes that was from Batman. And uh, I, I liked it. And then people are complaining that it's too dark. Well, okay. What, a, a Batman movie is too dark? I mean, what, th this isn't friggin' Spongebob or, or whatever the hell, uh, Dora or anything like that. This is Batman, come on. And... If it's too dark, well, it, it is dark. It is darker than the first one. And the people are like, well, it's too dark for my kids. And, well, yes, it is too dark for your kids. It's not for kids. This movie was not made for kids. Tim Burton said this was more for a more mature audience, you know, at least by, at least for teenagers, you know, that's, that would be at least the kind of audience, you know, teens and up. And it's not meant for kids. So when people complain about it, well, yeah, of course, it's, it's not... A kid movie and and then like uh, 
And then, and then people are also complaining about how the movie is more focused on the villains than it is the hero. And yet again, that was the point of the movie. Tim Burton even said that it was the point of the movie. And he also said that the people were missing the point of it, that it, it was supposed to be that way. I mean, the villains are more interesting. Batman has a big rogues gallery, and they, there are more villains than there are good guys. And trust me, the Bat family has expanded quite a bit, but there are still more bad guys than there are good guys in the Bat family. And that shows that the bad guys are more interesting. Not that we like the bad guys better, but we find them more interesting, and we like their psychology more. So I think it was going in the right direction of Batman Returns to explore the story of the bad guys more than the hero, because we know all about Batman. Batman's Batman. He's got an iconic story, but his, uh, you know, Penguin and Catwoman, not quite so famous as Batman himself, so they delve into their stories. And, you know, he makes his own version of Penguin and his own version of Catwoman, and I like those versions very well. You know, it gives kind of a tortured... Uh, a tortured Catwoman and a tortured Penguin because they've had bad things happen to them which made them go the way they are. And that's what makes them interesting and probably that's one of the reasons I, I like it, you know? So all these complaints people have about the movie, I consider that the upgrade, not, not a negative, you know? People, you know, basically what people are complaining about is what I consider to make the movie better than the earlier one. Though I do like, you know, Batman, the original. So anyways, Tim Burton, he, he made a more adult movie. And then people are also complaining. I mean, bitch, bitch, bitch. That's what people are, okay, sorry. Uh, people are always complaining. I mean, now, now I've heard people say, what's Penguin doing with a circus and these clown circus guys? They would fit better with a Joker. Well, Actually, that is completely wrong. The Joker is a gangster. He's not a clown. Uh, okay, he's, he's psychotic. He acts like a clown. He looks like a clown. But he's not really a clown. He's not from the circus. He was a gangster. That is his backstory. So Joker works with mobs. That's his business. He's got nothing to do with friggin' circus. And so when you've got the Red Triangle Circus working for the Penguin, that actually makes more sense since the penguin is a freak and he's from the circus you know he is the type of person who would be from a circus so it actually makes sense that the circus would be in batman returns with a penguin so anyways i think they were going in the right direction with this and it would have been nice if tim burton had made you know a third movie his way but no no they didn't we got joel schumacher's Batman Forever. Now I consider Batman Forever to be not as good as the other as the earlier two movies. It was a downgrade. It didn't they have bat nipples in Batman Forever? Yeah, I think that was when we saw the bat nipples. Okay, yeah. Okay, so we got Batman Forever and we got we introduced we get Robin finally. Finally, Robin. That's cool. But here's the downside. We get Robin in the shitty Batman movie. Ha, huh, man, that sucks. So uh, people are saying, well, Robin, he, he's a terrible character. I mean, look at this. He's in the terrible Batman movies. No, I think it's mostly coincidence. Um, Robin was brought in the, in the movies as soon as Joel Schumacher took over. So he had the misfortune of being in the shitty Batman movies. And so that's why there's such a stain on Rob in the character of Robin when it comes to Batman movies. But anyways, it was... It's a watchable movie. I'll hand it that. It's it's a watchable enough movie. But it's definitely not as good as the other two. It's not quite as serious as the other two. It's more campy and it's more silly and it's more stupid. And I just didn't like it. Not that much. I mean, Two-Face, look at him. They, they basically turned Two-Face into a clown. Just like he, he was like a Jack Nicholson imposter, but just not as good. Two-Face is not funny. Two-Face is not a clown. He's not supposed to be giddy. He's supposed to be serious. He's supposed to be, you know, solemn and a little more more of a sad character, and they ruined him. And the actor who played him would have been a good guy to play him if only he had played him more serious. He, If only he had played Two-Face more serious, it would have worked out. But they, he, he didn't, and it was messed up. Two-Face ruined the movie for me. 
along with a lot of other things. Jim Carrey, well, he's Jim Carrey. He was, you know, a goofy Riddler, but oh well. Riddler wasn't that good, but he wasn't as terrible as Two-Face. Anyways, um, my time is up, and you know, it, I'll probably post the link for part two in the description below. Thanks for your time.